Hello again and welcome to follow my sailboat building project. My name is Panu and I'm about to build this 15 meter liveaboard cruising sailboat right here in my shed in Finland. And behind me you can see the four frames for the boat. I almost say that they are the first frames but they are actually the last frames. This is the very stern of the boat and there is the next one, next one and next one. This is almost the biggest frame of the boat right in the middle. I started this project five years ago announcing that this should be the best documented sailboat build in YouTube. That was before there was according to Arabella or Tally Ho or those guys. So I have some quality to catch there. But my project is pretty different from those because I'm building this with modern methods with the CNC and uh, wood epoxy construction and stuff like that. So. I think there is plenty of new stuff to learn or see in this project as well. So if you're interested to follow my journey, please subscribe the channel now and uh, press that bell as well. And if you want to support projects like these, I suggest you go to check the Patreon, order some t-shirts or stuff like that. All that revenue is currently going into camera gear to help produce these videos. In the beginning of this video, you saw me milling more materials for the next frame. And after that, it was a total mess in this workshop, so I spent quite a few hours just to clean up that. And now all that material is nicely organized into this shelf, which has wheels on it, of course. They are nicely accessible here and this works very well. But all right, after the cleanup, I took off the frame from the table and I think I'll now show you a little bit more detail how that actually happens. After being curing underneath the box for a few days, the first task was, of course, to disassemble the box. The squeeze out and everything looked fine underneath there and it was time to start getting it off from the table. The first thing of course is to get all those rods off and those nuts out and for them I have this long socket that extends over the long rod which are a bit too long but uh, it gives kind of a good flexibility how to mount them. Now that I have done a few of these already, I try to keep it a little bit more organized and keep the nuts and washers on the boxes to be able to use them quickly afterwards. After all the nuts and washers are out, it's time to get these clamps off from there. Some of them are a bit more tight than others. I just didn't know how to handle the tolerances when I was cutting them. If I would do them again, I would make them a bit more spacious. I mean those holes and grooves on them.
and as mentioned I try to keep things a little bit organized and that's what I'm really not that good at, at least not yet. Then I changed the socket to a smaller one to get these side clamps off and it's just a matter of loosening them a little bit and then pulling them off from the rod. And after all the clamps and nuts are off, it's time to get those rods off as well. And for that I just hit them with hammer and push them through the table with this little smaller rod. And it's quite a nice way to get these off. They are of course falling underneath the table, but that's alright. Now when the rods are off, it's time to get the frame of the table. You can see those wooden dowels there, they are still through the table, so I need to carefully lift the frame upwards in this lower end. And I almost forgot there is this one rod that is right on the leg there, so it wasn't fully through there and I couldn't hit it through the table, so I need to carefully lift it up and I almost broke the frame end there, so I have to keep things in mind. And just like that the frame is off the table, there's some plastic stitched to the bottom side but I can clean up those later and you can probably see here that this frame is substantially big and heavy and the center of gravity or center of mass is quite really awkward, it tends to fall on the either side if I make a wrong move so a little bit difficult to handle. These small plywood pieces are just for between the clamps and the slats, so they prevent the rod ends in the digging of the wood and spread the load a little bit. And here we have it, the frame number four. It's quite large, my arm extends approximately to 2.3 meters and yeah.
here are all the frames in the same pile. Starting to look like a boat work. After getting that frame off the table, I clean up the mess and started to prepare the next frame immediately. And just like that, we have four frames laminated. This first one has already been shaped in its final shape. The rest of them are still pending. But uh, today is January 14th, Saturday. And tomorrow I will probably laminate the next frame. And for that, there is a whole lot of things to do today. So I'm saving some time and not film that today. You have already seen that all preparations stuff many times before. So instead I was thinking that I will show you a little bit of the structures of the boat in the computer. So let's jump into the office right now. So let's dive right in. Here you can see the structural model of the boat. You have seen this already before. Now I have done some color coding here. The last four frames that are in green are done. This one is the frame number 14, I think, yes. And it is almost the biggest frame in the boat, as you can see from the top view here. These red ones are still a bit bigger, so they are substantial <laughs> frames. And uh, when I mentioned before that I did pieces for five frames, these were the, this one, this one, and all these yellow ones here in the front. In end of this video, you will see a time lapse laminating this frame here, which is the frame number five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. I'll actually change it to green, so it is done. And currently, I'm making this. And on the next video, or video after that, I think I'm going to focus on this frame number zero, which is uh, quite a bit different from the others, because it is actually, if you can see, it is a ring frame, kind of. There is this top piece here. I'm not really sure yet how I'm going to do this. I have all the pieces ready, but I've been thinking that I might have to change those a little bit. But we'll get back into that. What I wanted to show you in this model is the frames here in the middle, which are the biggest and the, perhaps the most complicated ones. By that I mean really these first frames that have this notch underneath to place the keel timbers. Well, I'm referring <laughs> as a keel by this piece, which is here in the middle, of course, the keel and the keelson, it's combined into one piece in this case. But these pieces here are the actual, I could say keel timbers, not sure what they are called in this case, but anyway, they hold up the keels. And I think I'm gonna do these from uh, oak, which I have some. They are the pieces that are on the top of the insulated box. So I'm gonna grab that and do those from oak because these pieces are going to have a substantial pressure on them when these metal plates that hold up the nuts on the top side and the keels underneath like so. The keels will also have some kind of plate underneath here and uh, yeah it's kind of compressed between the keel and the plates on the top. But anyway, about these frames underneath there, I have done now notches to place the, those keel timbers in a very precise location and in the right angle. They are not straight from the top, but they are kind of uh, in angle to the front like this. So they are quite precise where they must be. 
so I think with these notches I can place them very very accurately. But uh, what's bothering me a little bit is that the fact that when the frame slats come here and make the structure they kind of cut in this position so they won't be able to continue to the keel. Let's change actually the view to the section. Here we go. This is the section of frame number six. So you can imagine when the slats come right along here and they should go continuously here to well to form the structure this kind of cuts them in between so they will end right here so what I'm thinking now is to actually make a modification for these to instead of having a notch I'm going to do a hole in here just to have this surface in the mold to get the keel timbers right where they belong but on the other end I'm gonna have continuous structure going at the outer edge of the frame. I didn't mention that the keel timber will be laminated as well from thinner pieces of wood, so I can insert the thinner pieces through this hole and the top side it will just be laminated. That way I can get the structure continuous here. But the other thing uh, of these middle frames is that they are very very big and in the previous video I made this frame number 14 which is a pretty big frame and there was also the problem with is such a big job to do it once but also it's on the limits that fits on the table so if I take uh, the actual picture where I do the frame pieces so this is 2d drawing and I have extracted the uh, frame pieces in the here but what's important is that I have the table in here so if I move this frame in its location on the table we take a look at the edges here there is only two rows of holes available for the clamps and this wasn't the biggest one still so this is something I didn't take into account when I did the table when I measured that it should be enough for these frames because I didn't know what kind of clamping system I would use by then so actually let's change this a little bit I will take the, the biggest frame Okay, here I have the frame number 11, which is the biggest one of them all. And you can already see the problem here, that the frame ends here. They fit on the table, but there is no room for the clamps anymore. So that is a bit of a bummer and a bit of a problem. But as I mentioned, I'm probably gonna edit these frames so that I can make them in two or three phases instead of doing everything at once. What I'm gonna do next for these is to kind of figure out what's the actual laminated section here. I think it's probably gonna be kind of a half frame or something like that and then the floor piece on separate lamination and then the other side of course so there will be three parts that then are glued together afterwards. So that's kind of the plan. That way I can reduce the lamination time with the one frame. I can probably do one half of these frames in approximately four hours. But let's uh, take a little recap how I actually make these. What's the process here? So if we go back to the 3D model here, uh, I'm not actually using these 3D modeled frames to make the parts. So these are just for visualization purposes. Instead, let's go to the floor plan here. So here you can see I have made a sections, section drawings from each of the frame and of course it depends which side of the frame it is. There's the front side and the back side of the frame and if we take one of these frames, for example this one here, there's the half model of the frame and uh, here you can see a line and this line has been exported from Rhino and it is the exact shape of the inside surface of the hull. So these I have exported from there and then I place them in the middle line here in the right height and on every frame there are two of these so there is of course the uh, forward end and the back end so they give the shape of the frame from the forward surface and the aft surface and from that I have 
done these two hatches, which is just a 2D surface kind of, and these present the front plate and the stern plate. And into these I can make all kinds of modifications. For example, here you can see there's a limber hole here. This is the keel timber notch. There is some notch here for the steel plate to connect to the keel. There's some notches for the rub rail right in here. There is the clamp molding, the beam that goes across. Here is the bulwark and the bulwark wall inside. There's a notch for placing it in the right spot of the bulwark and so forth. So I have done all kinds of things in the, these frame sections. And these are the actual shapes that I'm gonna cut with the CNC. So I just mirror them like so and combine them together and here we have the whole shape of the frame. And there is two of these from the each frame of course, the forward and the stern. And uh, these are the actual shapes that I use to cut the things with the CNC. Uh, for the 3D model I just make them as 3D pieces and connect them together and get the 3D frames. So that's the process of making these frames. And of course there's 18 of them, so it has been quite a job, but they are all done already, almost. I have just need to check everything before I do the actual cutting files. And after they are done, I will import them into this drawing, which is the drawing I do the cutting files from. And here I have the table, as you saw. And to this I put these mold blocks and put the holes in them. Also I do the uh, keel timber piece and all the rest is the laminated pieces. Then I cut them in pieces with this uh, connection. So I cut these parts with the CNC and uh, then from these I extract all of them and place them into the actual plywood boards. Here we can actually see all the five frames I done last time. So these are all individual plywood sheets that are cut with the CNC and here is the molds that are cut from the MDF board. So after cutting all of these I have all the parts needed to laminate the frames. And of course this is the keel timber. I did these five frames from one piece of laminated pine which is 57 millimeter thick. So that worked very, very well. And I'm gonna do the same with the next frames. Not sure yet which one I'm gonna do, but there is plenty of things to think about with these middle frames because I'm gonna, as mentioned, probably do them with uh, smaller sections. All right, uh, what else? Oh yes, the red frames here, these three and these four, they are thicker frames. So if we take the structural model here, you can see the mast steps are in there and in there. So these three frames form the structure around the masts. And here in the middle, I'm going to do additional frame behind there with thicker dimensions, just because this is in the place where the cabin kind of ends and there's all kinds of things going on there. So better make sure that it is strong enough and this is kind of the first phase before the hull planking, but afterwards there is going to be additional structures on the top. And I have modeled initially three of them, so there will be three substantial beams across here. So these are the actual structures to hold up the mast, the middle mast. There will be additional things here as well. There is still plenty of lamination to do after the hull is actually complete, so I'm gonna need the table still. Was there something else? I think you got now the basic idea what's going on with the computer. So as mentioned, next frame that I'm gonna do is this one and that number zero, and I think I'm gonna do a separate video of that number zero because it's quite different. But then Starting with these frames and all the other stuff, I think I'm gonna start thinking about the bow section here, and especially this chunk of wood here, which is a substantial piece of wood. It is, of course, very important to be strong, and uh, I have no idea how I'm gonna do that yet. I would love to utilize the CNC somehow with this. Maybe there's a possibility that I could make kind of a sliced surface in this way or something like that. I don't really know. That is something I need to start thinking soon. 
and then there's this connection with these clamp moldings, these beams into that. So plenty of things to figure out there. All the rest of the pieces between here are just kind of chunks of wood that are laminated between there. And actually quite soon I have to start thinking how I'm gonna manufacture or make these steel pieces that hold up the mast and the mast step and what, what kind of connection there is and yeah, plenty of things to still design but I think the next weeks or next couple of months is still going to be pretty much manufacturing these frames. Plenty of those coming still, but I'm excited because this process is now started really to come together and I have now better idea what it takes to make these frames. And just like that, I think it's enough for this video. Remember to subscribe, share this content with your friends who might have some interest in projects like this, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.